On today's Locked on Thunder podcast, we're going to dive into the Oklahoma City Thunder getting big nights from Alexei Pokashevsky and Usman Jang. Is Poku's development real? How many minutes will Usman Jang play for the Thunder once the season starts? And Jalen Williams presents an interesting question about his role with the team once they're fully healthy, given his playmaking prowess. Plus, we have an update. On SGA's injury, all this and more coming up on today's Locked On Thunder podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. You are Locked On Thunder, your daily Oklahoma City Thunder podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get it going on the Locked On Thunder Podcast. On the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. I am your host, media member, and editor-in-chief over at thunderousintentions.com. Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at LOThunderPod. Email the show, LOThunderPod at gmail.com. On today's show, we are diving into the Oklahoma City Thunder getting a big game Out of Alexei Pokashevsky and Usman Jang, SGA is trending in the right direction with his injury, and Jalen Williams provides another great outing that leads questions on what his role is with the team when they're fully healthy. And we're going to talk about the one weakness that we've seen so far for the Thunder in the preseason. So the Thunder wrapped up their home preseason slate on Sunday. Uh, they played Maccabi, and it was the also the final game that they play against a non-NBA team. Uh, so they're going to go to Detroit Tuesday and San Antonio Thursday, and then the preseason is over with, and it's time for the real deal on the 19th against Minnesota. In this game, a lot of people did not play. <laughs> SGA, of course, is out with that MCL injury. Chet Holmgren out with that foot injury. And then Josh Giddy, Trey Mann, Darius Baisley, uh, all were DNP CDs, did not play coach's decision. Mike Muscala is out with an ankle injury. And then, of course, Trey Burke and Marquise Chris are not with the team anymore. Uh, and Kenny Hustle out with a groin injury that uh, Mark said is not very severe at all. Uh, just kind of something that they're monitoring moving forward, and there's no reason for him to play in this game. Uh, the Thunders start out with Aaron Wiggins, Lou Dort, Lindy Waters, Usman Jang, and Alexei Pokashevsky. In this combination of players... Aaron Wiggins was the point guard. He was listed as the point guard, and he also lined up for the tip-off as the point guard. It was very interesting to see the Thunder, um, you know, kind of do that, but you saw their ability to play make and be unselfish really show up in this game. I do want to start, though, by thanking you for making us your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Thunder basketball. Subscribe for free across all platforms so you never miss an episode. But also, we did hear about SGA's injury. And it was the first real time that it felt very, very, very positive of, look, everything seems to be heading toward him playing on the 19th in the season opener. So he's going to be traveling with the team to Tuesday's game and Thursday's game. The home opener is the 23rd. Now it's the second night of a back-to-back. So, you know, would he play the 19th, then not play the 22nd, and then play the 23rd? Or would he make his debut on the 23rd or make his debut on the 19th? Whatever it would be. But it sounds like he's not going to miss very much more time. Now, obviously, is there any real incentive for him to play in the preseason? No. I mean, I don't think he'll play in the preseason. But I do think that he'll play, uh, if not on the actual season opener. It's trending that way, in my opinion. I think that uh, I think that there's a real shot that he plays the 19th. Uh, but very shortly thereafter. I'd be a little surprised if he was not on the floor on the 23rd. Uh, whenever you go to the Paycom Center and watch this team play their first home regular season game. Would he be healthy enough to go on the back-to-back? That's the big question. Uh, so he could easily skip that 22nd game against Denver. But nonetheless, I think it'll play the 23rd, which is also against Minnesota. So either way, I think that the season starts against Minnesota, either in the 19th or the 23rd. But that's just a quick update for you. Nothing's official yet, but that's just how it sounds as though it's trending that he'll play really soon once the season tips off, if not on opening night. The big things from this game. How can you not start from this game with Usman Chang? Usman Chang, look, he's going to play right away. And and this was a question mark to me. It was a question mark to many others about kind of what his role would be. Will he play with the blue for the majority of the season? Will he get some minutes with the Thunder? 
Will he be a guy that struggles to get on the floor at the start of the season? Then come, you know, March, he's playing a ton of minutes and it's still hard to pinpoint the exact total of numbers of minutes he's going to play because you do have to add back SGA, Josh Giddy, Trey Mann, Darius Baisley, uh, Mike Muscala, Kenny Hustle. All those guys are going to get minutes and there's only so many to go around throughout a contest of a basketball, a basketball game, obviously. Um, so all those guys are going to deserve minutes, but I think that he's going to get on the floor right away because we, we've already talked about his defense. His defense is NBA caliber right now, but Sunday was the most comfortable he's looked on the offensive end. 18 points, four assists, four rebounds, a steal, 66% from the floor, two for four from three. He did great cutting to the basket. He needs to start dunking. And I wonder if the non dunks yesterday were just a, a byproduct of that knee contusion that he was suffering from uh, that held him out of Thursday's game. But you know, if he slams a few of those home, he doesn't smoke the layup and he has these point totals even higher than uh 18 points. He at least has 20, if not more than that, you know, probably 20, 22 ish in that neighborhood. Uh, he had a steal defensively. I think also his, his just comfortability with the ball in his hand stood out. And this was the first time even dating back to the summer league where it felt like he was very sure of himself and very um, into the game as a playmaker, as an offensive weapon uh, for this team. Uh, he was great dribbling. He was great as a passer and he used his size very well to, to be able to go to the rim. And when he got there, he did finish. Like his, his rim finishing wasn't terrible. It's just that, um, you know, it's just that he could have dunked a few that he, that he didn't. And they ended up with missed layups, but Usman Jang played very well in this game. I, I think that Usman Jang has enough talent on both ends of the floor. And if you told me that he starts out at 15 minutes per game, I would not be stunned. If you told me it's 20 minutes a game, I'd be, I'd be like, okay, that's, that's a little more than I anticipated. And if it's less than 15, I'd be like, okay, well, you know, this team's pretty deep. So like, I think he physically can play in this league right away, but they do have a lot of guys to feed and a lot of minutes to not, not enough minutes to go around for all these guys. But I do think they'll play in the NBA because of his offensive development, development that we've seen and the fact that he can stand the floor defensively. My biggest question would be, you know, who who would be ahead of him in the pecking order? Like you go down this thunder list, who who would be more valuable to develop than Usman Jang? Usman Jang might be a all-star caliber guy, uh, you know, in his future. Like this is a guy that you you traded three first round picks for and selected at eleven. Like if you don't think that he can be an all-star guy and you're not developing him in that way and giving him all your all your resources, then you're not doing yourself any good because you already get, have given up three first round picks for him. So he better work out. He better be really good. And he's shown that so far in the preseason. So I hope that he continue to do that. Now, the biggest thing um, besides Usman Jang, because I think that Usman Jang's kind of exclamation point on his resume in this game was, hey, I can play in this league. And I don't have to be pigeonholed into going to the blue. Like, I felt like that was kind of his role heading into this year, which is like, okay, you're off with the blue. We won't see you for a few months. Go away, right? But, but the statement of, his defense and his offense has now transitioned that conversation to you might get NBA minutes. Alexei Pokashevsky was the second guy that really caught attention in this game. I know it's just preseason, but I think that Pokashevsky is the rare exception to that rule. And the rule being, oh, it's just preseason. Don't overreact to anything. Don't even bring anything up from preseason. Like it doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. I think that Alexei Pokashevsky might be the one guy that can overcome that or, or or override that because we've never seen him look good in any facet of basketball. We haven't seen him look good in NBA games. We haven't seen him look good in summer league games. We haven't seen him look good in G League games. Like We haven't seen him look this good at any point, preseason, summer league, G League, or NBA. Anywhere we have not seen him look this good. So it feels more real because – it's not as though he does this every year where he just explodes in the preseason and then goes back to being bad. This is the first time we've ever seen him look like a traditional basketball player where he's not going to end up on shacking a fool five times where he doesn't have the highlight real kind of, kind of play and immediately follow that up with a, with a play that'd be number one on an NBA, an NBA bloopers, low light reel at the end of the year, right? Like, this is the first time he's played very consistent, and I want to dive into that coming up. But first, I want to tell you right now about our good friends over at LinkedIn, folks. LinkedIn, it's there for you. 
when you need it. LinkedIn is where you should go to to post all of your jobs. These days, making new potential hires can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates. And that's why you have to go check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Then all you have to do is add your purple hashtag. We're hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring with simple tools like screening questions, make it easy to focus on candidates who have the right skills, the experience, and you can quickly prioritize what you'd like to know with about your interviewee and who you would like to hire. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs. Number one in developing qualified hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster by posting your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked in MBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked in MBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. Terms and conditions do apply. We are back on the Locked On Thunder podcast, on the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. Thank you so much for making Locked On Thunder your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Thunder basketball. Subscribe for free across all platforms so you never miss an episode. Also, check out the Locked On Ultimate Pro Basketball Preview. Go over there right now. It's a six-part episode extravaganza to get you ready for the NBA season with local team experts and Locked On uh, NBA Podcast Network Insiders plus Odyssey Insiders as well in the NBA, all combining into one ultimate preview. Just search the ultimate pro football, uh, pro basketball preview on the 2022 Odyssey app, YouTube, wherever you podcast, podcast, podcast from. Let's start now by diving into Poku's performance. So Usman Chang, he flashed ball handling, he flashed playmaking, he flashed rim finishing in this game. Also, Two for four from three for Usman Jang, 18 points, four assists, four rebounds of steal. Like, all that stuff looked comfortable and real for him. Alexei Pokashevsky looks like he's taking a step in his NBA career. We have to put the context to it. Before we just throw it out and say it's preseason, or before we throw it and say, well, he's playing you know non-NBA teams in these last two games, the context around this is Poku was taking what was taken higher than many people thought he would be taking in the 2020, 2020 NBA draft, obviously. The Thunder trade up to go get him. He's their guy. Many people thought that he would not be in the NBA until this year. Like the many people thought that he'd be staying overseas. The Thunder brought him over right away. He went from the second division to the NBA. That is a massive jump. Plus the pandemic and the weird off seasons. This is the first true NBA off season that he's ever had. And the conversation around Poku is different, right? I think that at times fans can hear optimism from other sources, right? You know, fan, other fans, whatever, podcasts as well, and be like, well, you guys talk about Pokachevsky every year and he's never any good. This is the first time that the actual team is talking highly about him. This is the first time that Mark and his, his teammates are talking very highly about Alexei Pokachevsky. As I mentioned before the break, this is the first time he's looked like an NBA caliber player. Now, is he playing an NBA caliber big man you know, at the center position this last game? No. Is he, is he playing NBA caliber you know, guys in these last two games? No. But this is the first time, no matter the setting, he's looked good. It's 15 points. It's 66% from the floor. Three for six from three. He did not miss a shot inside the perimeter. He also had 10 assists, a couple potential assists that did not go down. Five rebounds in a block. He looked good in that center spot. And you can really tell the the muscle and the weight that he's put on. You can tell how it impacts his game, how it makes him more balanced, how it makes him more um, you know, able to absorb contact on both ends and, and stand his ground. He doesn't get bumped off a spot easily on either side of the floor. He looks different. And it looks like the game slowed down for him, and he said that as much. You know, he said as much last game, you know, after last game. The game looks like it slowed down for him. He looks more comfortable, and... He looks resided to the fact that, hey, I'm not going to be this superstar, right? I'm not going to be this, you know, MVP, this unicorn seven-footer that can dribble behind my back and make these fa fancy passes and shoot from three and and go dunk on somebody. Like, he, he looks finally calmed by, okay, the pressure's off me to be that. Can I just be an NBA player? And the answer is yes. He looks like an NBA player. 
he's doing a great job of connecting has been the big phrase you know, around OKC of, of connecting the offense, connecting everything together as a team and not going for the extraordinary play, but instead mastering the ordinary play. He's done a great job of that. And where Pokashevsky wins in this development is if he can figure out how to be a normal NBA player, run of the mill NBA rotational player, he can still make the extraordinary play one or two times a game. Heck one or two times a week that elevate his status, that elevates his worth, that elevates his value. He still has those traits. The behind the back pass in this game was awesome. It didn't end in a bucket. It was awesome. Stuff like that, that, that a seven footer quote unquote is not supposed to be able to do, right? You can still have those moments, but he has to calm down on the, on the amount of times he attempts those moments, right? Especially in fails. He looks more patient. He looks more comfortable. And as he said in, in his post game, the game has slowed down for him and he feels better. He feels a lot better about it. And also yesterday was the first time he's ever been excited to talk to us post game as the media. He even jumped the gun a little bit. He, he even jumped up on the podium before Mark got there. And, and if you didn't know, coaches always go first. And then the players, he was actually up there like two or three minutes before Mark even walked down to the room. It was, it was incredible how much he wanted to talk to us yesterday and, and, and how interactive he was yesterday felt a lot different than what he usually does. Like Poku is just more comfortable. Jalen Williams, though, I think that what Jalen Williams did yesterday is kind of his role. I think that Jalen Williams yesterday, the game was slow. The game was sluggish. It was sloppy. OKC was losing, right? Timeout by Mark. Who does he put in? After these guys look sluggish and they look slow and they, and they don't look like they want to be there and they don't really have any intensity, who does he put on for the, after the timeout? He puts in Jalen Williams and uh, Eugenio Morui. Jalen Williams instantly comes in, even after having strep throat, you know, just days prior, where he couldn't practice or play on Thursday. And he brings the intensity. He brings the energy. He's picking guys up at half court. He's he's doing everything that he can to, to get this flow back in the Thunder's order. 15 points, 13 assists, with some wild vision, some wild cross-court passes, and then this, this beautiful Magic Johnson over-the-head pass four rebounds, got to the free throw line eight times. And if you've listened to this podcast before, you know that I always preach about the difference in scoring 10 to 15, 15 to 20, 20 to 25, 25 to 30 points per game. The difference in those levels are how many times can you get to the line? It's why SGA had that huge free throw boom. He started getting to the line 12 times a game. All of a sudden he's averaging 25 points a night. Like it's, it's that simple. So again, not NBA players, not at all, but still he drew fouls enough to get the line eight free throw attempts 66 percent from the floor he was great and i mean great at navigating the pick and roll as a pick and roll ball handler plus had a couple steals in the defensive end he brought that energy he brought that intensity and the game flipped on its head once he got in there and i think that that's going to be his his calling this season at least i think it's gonna be a great guy to use off the bench and and, and he might even play starter level minutes right and mark's talked about this before and I thought about this before on this podcast many years ago. We get really wrapped up in the starter stuff. Coaches in them, they don't. They don't care. Like they, they, to coaches in them, it, it is about, you know, starting is just hearing your name called. It's just that the lights are out, the crowd's rocking, you get to run out first on the floor. How does your rotation get built from there? Is what Mark said a couple weeks ago. Jalen Williams might end up playing minutes per game-wise the same or more than a certain starter on this team. But his value to be able to either put him in and like he did yesterday, turn the tide and stop a run from the other team and, and, and wake the team up as an intense kind of kind of leader, even though he's a rookie, or keep a run going in the right direction. If the team gets off to a rocking start and it's time though for Shea and Giddy to get a breather, you put him in, he can take it and run with it. I mention this all the time. But it's funny to see this team start to get put together and the pieces start to get kind of baked together. This team is being built differently than the last team, than the last run that the Thunder had with KD and Russ and, and, and Harden and them. It's being built back to front instead of front to back. How many times during those legendary runs of Russ and KD and, and those great teams, how many times was the difference in a series or a game or whatever, night to night, playoff series, playoff series, 
Katie and Rush are on fire. They're doing great. Time to come out of the game, though, and they don't have anyone to pass that baton to. They don't have anybody to keep this thing rolling, keep this thing going. How many times did that happen in that last iteration? But when you get these kind of guys, like Jalen Williams, like Trey Mann, like all these other guys, yeah, they're not starters, but they're still incredibly valuable because they can take that baton and run with it. Jalen Williams, a guy who can be a playmaker and who can uh, be an intensity, like kind of machine. And Trey Mann, who can be a microwave scorer off the bench, put those two on your on your pine. When you take out your quote unquote superstar starters, they just run with it and they keep up the good things that you're doing or they write the ship on nicely don't have it. It's really good to see Jalen Williams do what he did. And, and it was really good to see that already Mark trusts the team uh, and trust the rookie to jumpstart them in a game where they just did not have it. Now, granted, didn't have all of his options available to him, but still, it was fascinating to see that happen. But what's even more fascinating is going to Bet Online because Bet Online is your number one source for odds, news, and scores. It's as simple as going to betonline.net for your number one source for football betting and basketball, baseball, boxing, UFC. If you only feel comfortable betting on basketball, I totally understand because it's probably the sport that you know the most about because you're listening to this podcast right now. And maybe opening night's too far away for, for you to want to wanna bet on in terms of the spread because the Thunder are 11 and a half point underdogs still on opening night. And you want to get even more creative than that. You don't want to just bet a single game because, I mean, a single game, anything can happen night to night. But you feel very confident in a team. Let's say it's the Hawks. You can bet on their over-under. Do you feel confident they're going to win over 46 games? If you do, the over is minus 130. If you think that they're going to win under 46 games, the under is plus 100. So you can make some money on that. They have those totals for every single team. Go check them out today. Bet online where the game starts. We are back on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast, on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. I want to talk about what Mark said afterward about Jalen Williams and not playing with a true point guard. He was asked about how, you know, Aaron Wiggins starts out as the point guard in this game, and you're missing SGA, you're missing Josh Kitty, you're missing Trey Mann, like you're missing a, a true by design point guard. And some of the comments to that quote was, well, Jalen Williams had 13 assists and he played point guard in college. Yes, understand and I understand that kind of quip, but that's not his design designated role in the NBA. His role in the NBA is not to be a point guard. Shooting guard, small forward, whatever you want to call him, it's not to be a point guard. And Mark says that that's how this team's built to play with no point guard, to just keep up this ball movement, keep up this kind of, you know, whip it around, keep the defense off balance, and then just add a great passer in Josh Giddy to it, add a great playmaker in SGA to it. So with that being said, Jalen Williams just had a 13 assist game and it's obviously that he can handle you know, point guard duties and handle playmaking duties. How many reps as an on-ball playmaker does Jalen Williams get whenever this team's fully healthy? That's where I think that, you know, while we love Jalen Williams, I do too. I, I, I think that he can be an all-star in this league. I really do. While we love Trey Mann's explosiveness, I do too. I think it's better for this team if they don't start. Again, starting... It's a lot of pomp and circumstances. Doesn't really matter. It matters more how you close a game. It matters more how you how you how you, distri- you know distribute your minutes. But it doesn't really matter who starts the game. If Jalen Williams can become the player we think he can become, if Trey Mann can become the score, the player that we think he can become, the score that he can become, and Josh Sheedy is who we think he is, and SGA is this twenty-five to thirty point per game score. Can you imagine those two running their race for the you know for the forty-eight minutes? And each time they need a pit stop in that race, their partners in crime are Trey Mann handling off-ball scoring duties and Jalen Williams being a playmaker as he just dishes out 13 assists in his sleep on Sunday. That's a really deep team. That's a really fun team. I'm interested to see, though, kind of how you balance that because there are going to be times where Jalen Williams plays with Josh Giddey and SGA and then he becomes your third ball handler. It'll be interesting to see how that happens. Now, I do want to talk the biggest flaw about this Thunder team so far. It's been a lot of good. They've played very well. The defense has been awesome. 
and it has the chance to be a top 10 defense in the NBA. I said that last week. Last week I said that. My only worry, while they are really good defenders and they're really well coached and they're going to get up every single night and play with, I think, more intensity, I think more often than not, when you watch this team play and you look back upon that game, whenever the final buzzer sounds, the question of who was more intense tonight, who was more energetic tonight, will oftentimes side with OKC. They do almost everything right defensively. But the one mistake so far has been leaving too many corner shooters wide open. And oftentimes, it's kind of this scenario where, you know, the non-ball side corner defender is creeping over in the paint, creeping over in the paint, and relying on that athleticism to go close out. And they just can't quite get there. Or the, or, or the guy that's defending up top can't quite rotate down and get there in time. And then leave just enough space for a wide open corner three. And these non-NBA teams have not been able to knock them down at a high clip, but NBA teams will. So, granted, it's preseason. We don't know what they're working on. We don't know what they're trying to accomplish. We don't know what, what kind of looks that they want to see on film and, and kind of how they want to test their bandwidth of you know, what they can do defensively. Just something to watch for, though, as we move into playing more NBA teams in the preseason and also uh, in the regular season. Are the corners still wide open? Is that still a weakness for this defense? Because everything else has been perfect defensively. Also want to touch on Jalen Williams out of, out of uh, Arkansas. 14 points, 11 rebounds, 4 assists. He did have the 5 fouls, though. So he only missed 2 shots. He's a really good passer. He set better screens. Remember, I've been preaching about that. About him not sending as good of screens as I'd like him to in Summer League and, and before. Set really good screens yesterday. He has a really good rapport with J-Dub as well. That's been awesome to see. I still think that Jalen Williams is best pathways through the blue this season. But 14 points, 11 rebounds, 4 assists. He plays good defense in the sense of, it reminds me kind of like Roby. Like he's he's better than Roby defensively because he's stronger. But he's kind of in the right spot and he's always rotating very well. But he's young. He's a rookie. You can bait him into fouls and, and he, can, he can rack up five of them in a hurry. And NBA teams will attack that and run him off the floor as he's so young. So I worry about that for the first you know month or two of the season that he starts playing whatever his first month or two is in the season that he's getting real minutes. But he's a better rebounder than I thought he would be. He's a really good passer and he can score whenever he the present uh, the opportunity presents itself. He looks a lot like Nick Allison out there. I'm not gonna lie to you. And the the, the nice little back and forth connection with with Jada was nice. Uh, there was one play that was really well designed where it has a lot of different options on it and it was it was J Dub dribbling the ball. Uh, passes it to Jay Will. Jay Will fakes the handoff to him on the wraparound, and then J Dub comes crashing baseline, and then that's whenever uh, Jay Will gives him the bounce pass for the easy layup or dunk it was for J Dub. It's awesome to see. Uh, those two guys play really well together, and this team is fun. And once again, the attendance was not there, although, I, albeit not an NBA team, a preseason game, and an NFL football Sunday, not conducive to packing at the Paycom Center. But trust me, this team is fun. This team is very fun. Uh, it was worth it for me to make the drive up there and watch this team play uh, because uh, even with all the players that are out that I listed at the top of the show, they still had so many guys where start to finish, I was watching players that you can comfortably invest in, that you can comfortably say they have a chance to be on the to be on this team whenever this team is fully finished and flushed out. So go support them. They're fun to watch. Uh, on tomorrow's show, we're going to talk about what is one key area to watch with every single team and with every single player on this team that they can improve on? On uh, Wednesday's show, we're going to recap the Pistons game. On Thursday's show, we're going to talk about what three players I think can make a massive leap this season. And on Friday's show, we're going to recap that Spurs preseason game, which will be preseason in the wraps. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening to Locked on Thunder. And until tomorrow, be good and be good to one another.